Okay. <laughs> Are you sure? We're live! <laughs> <laughs> Folks, it's Tuesday night. Welcome aboard Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, between the Rolls, our shot at a talk show uh tonight we've got a really big shoe for you we've got three uh recaps and then we move on to the topic of campaigning in uh whatever freaking world kyle has come up with i think it's uh pre-organized civilization so that should be kind of cool uh if you're new to the show welcome aboard if you're coming back Hey, thanks for coming back. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy cool stuff, uh, the link is down there. If you want to join us in Discord, the link is down there. Most importantly, if you want a seat on this show or one of the one shots this week, uh, hit us up. M Hobo Inc. Twitter, Gmail. Uh, we'll get you in there. We got a one shot scheduled for Saturday. So should be pretty shitty but you know <laughs> come on in anyway uh thanks to pirate dog dice for making old big red here that'll kill just about any pc that i have a problem with and don't forget if your game stinks oddfishgames.com adventure sense oddfishgames.com is going to be doing their rpg cat or rpg with your cat this Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, the link to the free registration is on our Twitter right now. So go ahead and sign up. It's a good time. Folks, let's introduce you to the cast, our glorious cast. Uh, first one up, uh, David. Uh, I lied. It's not a glorious cast. Same old guys. Yeah, same old cast. So. Same old cast. <laughs> David, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm David. I am... A I guess kind of a regular on <laughs> between the roles. Oh. I'm also a regular on our Thursday show, Cacophony. I play Zadar. So uh, I sometimes do one shots on Saturday, and uh, I've been known to, I don't know, write or something. I just haven't put it Allegedly. on the show. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's me. I just played play in these games and come up with stupid commentary so there you go folks that is so unusual for any of our cast members <laughs> speaking of stupid commentary kyle ah! <laughs> <coughs> wow <laughs> jade man you want to eat the peanut faster what peanut i had an m&m &M. same thing I don't know. Man, I tell you what, I was getting solicitations telling me... Whoa, to don't let the wife know. That's just wrong. Yeah. Yeah, Indiana. yeah no, no. Yeah, but I kept getting them, and I asked for them to stop, and then finally I was just like, stuff a cut. And the reply back was, oh, we're so sorry, sir. We'll take you off the call list immediately. Have a good day. Thank you. Oh, nice. So, like I'm that. asked nicely. Just tell them right off, and you'll be fine. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kyle. Uh, I, I tell people offensive things, and sometimes I care, and more often I don't. Uh, uh, and I play Dewey Docmel in the campaign. I will play various goblins in the one-shots, and I have written the most one-shots of this group. And there's the gauntlet, folks. <laughs> right yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. I think that would try to get me to write more too, huh? Oh, you, you two are going to have to hump because he's he keeps writing. Uh, last but certainly not least, our thorn between the two roses, Carol. Screw you. I am the rose between the two thorns, or the three thorns. Hey, everyone. My name is Carol. I'm a commission mini painter, a longtime gamer, and sometime GM. Hey. <laughs> You know, I have it on gallery view, so I can see all of you little shitheads right now. But mature audiences only. Sorry. Of course, he never says that until we, of course, drop something bad. <laughs> Me. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I pl also I play Taryn in the campaign, and holy shit, Frank, what you've done to her! <laughs> I love it. I'm having so much fun with it, and uh, there, so and I'm on this often enough. Out. Is, uh, my Tuesday game has been suspended because of fucking COVID. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, my real life is uh, on hold, so yeah, I'll fucking so I'll do the guys. show. Yeah, no yeah, shit. You know, when told. that COVID ends and your uh, regular show, you're gone. She's out of here. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not He's got 17 other games when COVID isn't around. 
Actually, Does she play yeah. anything besides D and D? Hey, stop, 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 stop. First of all, I think she no, plays no, like um, um Hunt Finder. Uh, uh, oh. Kyle, shut up and stop talking. What, what right, is I play, I play Shoots and ladders. I don't Jesus know. <laughs> well, shut up. I play. We more can games. still hear you. <laughs> I play more games now than I did before I went into quarantine. Just my Tuesday one. But my Tuesday one was only every other week, and it will only be every other week. So I'll, you'll definitely have me at least half the time. If you you oh, 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 can you see why, you know, I might want a Tuesday off now and then. This is the no. abuse. Preach into the choir. <laughs> <laughs> where the hell, Scott? Scott's supposed to replace me every once in a while. Son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah, he must uh, be thing again. He's one of them government people. Well, it is hunting season. Yeah, There's that too. Meat for the family, uh, folks. <laughs> if you've seen the show, you know what happens next. We go ahead and review the three shows. Uh, fortunately this week uh and give you a little bit of insight on them remember all three of them are in the archive so if you want to follow the entire shit storm uh buzz on over to tinyurl.com slash hobo inc archive and see it there our first offering was is and always shall be at least for the time being cacophony Episode 154, entitled Fallout. David, uh, you are a regular. Tell us about it. While and, unlike, and unlike Fallout 76, this was actually fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, hey. Fallout, our cacophony episode. Uh, the Further <laughs> Adventures. Um, uh, ongoing adventures of uh, Cami, Zadar, and Daphne. Uh, it kind of all came to a head, folks, this <laughs> this week. Well, actually, it was kind of the resolution. Uh, there was there was a trial, a lot of explanation, <laughs> some vindication, an incarceration. Yes. So, uh, and then worst haiku uh, ever. Yeah. Yeah, worst haiku ever. Uh, followed by suddenly, because of the events that that had taken place, uh, one of uh, as we exposed the crime boss in cacophony turned out to be the councilman Zoran Zubek. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, one of us is paying attention to. The he's, he's been taken into he's he's been taken into uh, custody. Uh, we had to answer for the huge battle that happened the episode before, and uh, yeah, yeah, it was time to pay the uh, pay the piper, folks. So uh, after long deliberation and whether or not we were actually going to get out of this scot free. Uh, the the council decided in our favor uh they exonerated us um one of our characters almost got retired that night uh because suddenly there was a spot available on the council several names were were put out there zadars was actually one that came up uh, what started as a joke that uh camille was saying oh we need a, another z on it and our one <laughs> says well your name actually did come up. So anyway, so just to get him off the show, folks. Yeah. So I wasn't ready to retire my character. So I'm just like, <laughs> so let me nominate two other people. And one of them was our illustrious guild master from under these nuts. Oh, that's an election I ensued. We had some, uh, yeah, uh, we had to get out there and get the boat folks. So, Press Press the meat. Mm -hmm. Kiss so, babies and shit. <laughs> so, trying to uh, to drum up support for from under, he was he was running against Otto Ottoman, the guy who owns the furniture store. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, we we had some legitimate <laughs> electioneering going on, folks. I mean, you know, there was. 
there was uh, cookies uh, purchased for for all the voters that day, as well as free coffee, you know, some skywriting. We ran into an old friend, you know, who happened to had a skywriting what? service. Yeah, who put the screws to us <laughs> as far as the cost of it. And uh, yeah, it was a close election, folks, but from under, you know. It was uh, really close. It was really, it really was, close. It was what, four votes? Four votes, yeah. yeah. The dice giveth and the dice taketh Take away. away. Now, I'm uh, pretty auto. sure that was that sky right you paid for. And so really, did you really pay that much to win an election? Yes, yes they we did. did. They paid. We are an we are nearly broke. To, to... Uh, how much money was that, Frank? Just so I can write that down. That was at least six hundred gold. I no, I think when we added it. up, it was like four hundred gold. So... Hey, who can almost make it rain like Dewey does? No, but that wasn't for a Dewey service. Four hundred wasn't just Dewey service. That was. Oh. Just... It was, it was like nine hundred and fifty gold total is what they spent on shit. Man, it was. It that was auto Ottoman bought whores and alcohol, and that was yeah. Very it didn't even that. occur to me, folks. I'm a freaking changeling that can change into Jessica Rabbit. It's just like I should have used that to get the vote out anyway. But you didn't, and you almost fucked it up. Almost fucked it up, but we didn't. We pulled it out. Our guild master, our illustrious guild master. Uh, gets elected uh of course <laughs> that leaves a vacancy at the adventurers guild so uh yeah one of us ascends and that is fauntleroy fauntleroy is now the new guild master so and that's, that's how we ended it folks we also had to say goodbye to some dear friends we said goodbye to, <laughs> to mortimer j sneed what? Uh, no. Yes. Hey, you did not kill Mortimer J. Sneed. No, no, his sabbatical was up, and oh, oh. oh. and he, he did Zadar. Work? He did Zadar a solid, and uh, he got Zephyr admitted to the Grand Academy. So, so that ended well. Oh, um, we ended up getting uh, <laughs> a guild cat, Mister Mittens. Yeah, who was uh, orphaned, you know, when poor Eunice died in the battle, you know, on the docks, you know, between the Pegasus and the Manicor. Anyway. <laughs> Which you those, are, those are ship names, folks. <laughs> yeah, those are ship names. Anyway, we, uh, you know, Zadar and Camby and, you know, Daphne, of course, covered the funeral arrangements for Eunice. And from what we're told, a statue will be uh placed in her <laughs> honor so in and Kikaki. that is also on twitter at this moment in time yes. oh the at the picture of the yep. stat rest in peace eunice monk slayer yes. i forget to find that many oh, yeah. i wish you could show here but, we but, made uh, eunice the hero so <laughs> you guys <laughs> fucking murdered her is what you did <laughs> daphne <laughs> murdered her Jesus. no well no technically the mistress of pain murdered her so you know Okay. Well, that is Fallout, folks, from the Cacophony episode. It is out in the archive. Next up, as Carol has promoted, uh, was the campaign episode, War Council. Both Kyle and Carol participated. Who wants to go first? I like to call it Heads Floating on the Dock of the Bay, though. That was last episode. Sitting on the dock no. of the bay. Oh my god, you're terrible. Watch <laughs> sister's head float, float away. away. <laughs> let's let's whistle it, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, Carol, you go ahead and give the recap while they whistle Otis uh oh god. Otis Redding's uh yeah, dock of the bay. Yeah, let's see if I can remember everything that happened. There was a lot that happened. Uh holy crap. Um let's see. So if I recall, yeah. Thank, we're, we're, th thanks for prepping for tonight. <laughs> and no, I mean, usually it's always at the top of my head. <laughs> so when we st you said, if I recall, when we started, we actually started with the, my sister had just been friggin' executed. The happy, happy. As story. a pirate and a criminal, she was fucking Johnny <laughs> Reb. All of those fucking rebels need to be hanged. If I recall. Brown she, boys. It was as a traitor because she basically 
under orders from Io was the I was in charge of this operation. But Io was the one who did it. And I mean, I remember I tried to convince Bushmill of it unsuccessfully to save her, but that that's that's two episodes ago anyway. So let's get to this one. Uh, so I believe we started with uh, Dewey and Minis who went to breakfast and uh, they always tried to find a place to get some breakfast. And I believe they succeeded even though it was not very good breakfast and they, uh, the place they ate at was kind of a wreck. I do believe they tried to help clean up. Always, <laughs> what? Yeah, she, of course, cash chat and friggin' in uh, Zoom here. I have no idea what the hell that even meant. Um, and then they made their way, they were making their way back to, to us at the docks uh, when this red robed monk attacked them. In it's air. always it's fucking monks, Frank. <laughs> he just realized how awesome they were. They yeah. are pretty fucking powerful. They're pretty <laughs> fucking <powerful. laughs> They got, their monks are really good. So basically, Meniz is flying in the air and this monk jumps on him. I am pretty sure that monk was probably after Dewey because we know Dewey's got at least a couple of people, parties that are interested in seeing him dead. One his, one of his father figures and the other one was a certain drow that appeared as a guest in this a uh, while back, if I recall correctly. That is her, right? She was the other one that we've seen a note Here's saying. The dark that, elf. Yeah, it was her too. It was that particular dark elf. You guys yes. are pretty quick to throw Christy under the bus. Well, I don't know. That's the only dark elf I know that we. She never gets the opportunity to throw anyone under the bus. Carol is always true. the bus. Well, person. other than Tabaxi. Well, no, she doesn't throw them throw under the bus. She the just bus. hates them. Besides, there aren't any in the party to throw under the bus. I've tried to. I tried to throw Perpetua under the bus, and that it really didn't work out. Uh, so they were attacked, and they managed to. They managed to. Uh, well, it wasn't a barrel roll, but it's or was it a barrel roll? Because remember, Dewey had Dewey actually had to run on top of Meniz as he like rolled, and they did get rid of the monk. Who promptly? Oh, I forget about the two guards. The two so guards met, that they had told you guys to go go to the meeting. roof, and he said, what "Do that? a barrel roll," and that's when we did the barrel. I want actually. I was thinking that at the time, do a barrel roll. But yeah, I forgot about the two guards that sent you back to to the center, and they were there, and the monk basically killed the two of them um, because I guess because he couldn't kill you, didn't want witnesses, whatever. So you guys make it back and you report this. Uh, let's see, whatever. We find out that the ships are actually not unfriendly. They are, oh, it's, what is it, a Commodore, right? Was the rank? Yes. So there was, so basically the, this Commodore who's friends with Bushmill, I don't remember the name, but I do remember that this Commodore is an elf and he is apparently Lucas's uncle. So was I was like, hey, reunion. finally, we get to see something of Lucas. <laughs> so we get, so we put, I think basically the next thing that happened really was the meeting and it was, it was a planning meeting. And I, you know, I want to know if we're running this operation, what is it any of their business, how we do it? <laughs> but basically we had to sit there and plan. Uh, what comes next, how we're going to actually try to pull this off. And I believe the plan is the army, uh, much to Taryn's, Taryn did not particularly like the thought of the army attacking Fulton. Uh, enough people have died already. Of course, part of this is fueled by the fact that she's lost a whole lot of people in a real short time. So she's not too keen on more people dying uh, for this operation than have to. Spoiler alert, they're all gonna fucking die. <laughs> yeah, all, yeah, all my all my friends and my family are probably all gonna die or all dead. I gave them a list too for flavor, but uh, they're probably all dead. This is probably a waste of time. It'd be like uh, saw. <laughs> oh <laughs> when we get there, all the heads are just gonna be on pipes lining the thing, you know, just to fuck with fuck with Stop her. Spoiling it, Carol. I don't know what he's gonna do, okay? It's corpse no. abacus. <laughs> <laughs> so um 
So let's see. So while they're attacking it, I believe our plan is to have Manise fly us over the wall while we're invisible. That worked before to get us into Yaddle. I think it'll work to get us into Fulton. Of course, Frank knows our plan and he knows how to defeat plans when he has time to plan himself. Uh, and we also figured out how we we're gonna get there. There were two ways. Now I'm pretty sure I know who's gonna be screwed by taking the way, because you said, depending on which way we pick, somebody's gonna get screwed or two people are. And I'm pretty sure I know which two it is, but I could be wrong. But we're taking, we're going by boat. We could have gone by boat or by road. We're gonna go by boat. The subway was <laughs> broken. Yeah, I mean, I figured the road might be more dangerous and probably slower. And we're, we're time is of the essence here as the world is beginning to burn, at least the island is. Uh, with the plague and the blight and who knows, maybe the freaking war. Actually, yes, because it's, we also figured out that Io is probably where the evil that was let out of the boxes landed. And the, it didn't just land in him, it probably also landed on Dewey's father figure. And you know, and I, it just dawned on me, but she died. So I'm not sure how that works because apparently you can't kill people that are infected by this evil, or maybe it's just Io. Because if it's, if you can, if it's just Io that you can't kill and the others you can, well, it just occur to me, maybe we could have- Carol, as she recaps <laughs> the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I, it occurred to me, I'm like, son of a bitch, you probably could have saved my goddamn si sister if she was infected. So um, so what else happened? Let's see. Or was that about, I'm trying to remember what oh, happened at the end. Technically, oh, wait, she is saved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a way she is. Uh, but I do remember, now I remember what happened at the end. So after that, we kind of went our separate ways. I went to- Which the, is always a great idea. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. Oh, one thing I was going to comment. I apparently am the queen of bad ideas right now because basically I go off alone to the dock where my sister was, you know, killed. Her body's still there. There's a bunch of freaking little bratty kids like doing whatever kids do. And I intimidate them all away. I take the body and I put it in a little rowboat. I, I'm going to say I retrieved the head. She would have retrieved the head floating on the water and put it all there and she set it fire. Uh, Viking funeral at sea and played her flute, uh, some funeral dirge. And her shoulder probably hurts like fucking hell because that never treat, I never actually healed the friggin' wound, the double 20 wound. As for the other ones, then we have the exciting thing that Dewey, uh, Dewey was standing there. I figured, what were you getting from the monk? The monk the, from the uh, from the gnome, Professor Turnbuckle. Turnbuckle. Bunskin. What were you get? He was uh, yeah. Turnbuckle. Professor. Yeah, so, so the professor Turnbuckle was basically he was our info dump. He had a ton of knowledge about the uh, the rod of catching in the box and and how, and the evil that was released. So it was great info session. But you were there getting him to sign something when all of a sudden he just dies because the monk takes him out. So then Dewey goes chasing after the monk and eventually he, you lose him, unfortunately. Really? So I'm at the dock by myself with this freaking monk who's out to kill probably Dewey is my guess on the loose and who knows. I think it's going to be very interesting. I think every session from here on out is going to be very inter interesting. Interesting. Every so, session before just sucked ass, so I don't want you. No, that. no. Well, no. I think it was interesting, but this is like getting. This is extreme. This is. This is. Oof. The extreme. This is rough. That it was is. episode one fifty five, folks. Also <laughs> in the archive, so take a look at it. You can tell because it's got the greenish background. Last episode, we're going to go ahead and recap is episode one fifty six. Cat tell the margu <laughs> campaign on sunday the three generational game which this past sunday uh due to issues was a two generational game right. where we only had three <laughs> players uh they have been able to uh extract themselves from the dizumi ruins uh in spite of a cat tell of drug dealers uh mm -hmm. harvesting maui meowie wowie meowie, uh, yeah. and they inter were interrupted by a tortle group uh infiltrators uh they however 
snuck past them and uh, felt, what the hell, let's grab their boat. Uh, so the only problem was they had to go down a very steep incline and three of them got nutted due to shitty rolls, testicles everywhere. Uh, <laughs> now they are in possession of a total uh, warship. So mm -hmm. things are about to get interesting. I sent them the specifications of that today and gave them their options. Uh, surprisingly, none of those options are any good to them. Uh, so catch that. Uh, episode 155 or 156, Cat Tell, also in the archive. Moving on to our main topic, and I'm going to turn this baby over to Dewey because Dewey. To Dewey, huh? To Kyle. Hey, uh, we'll we'll let Kyle do this because he hasn't talked yet. So talk, please. I'm tired. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to say that was a very concise explanation of an episode there, Frank. There was, you, you know what? It, if you, quite nicely. It, it was very good. Go watch it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, I feel like after hearing it, I have to watch that. Uh, the other, the other one, I definitely feel like <laughs> I've already seen it. You know, hey, it's you uh, the episode is worth it just to hear Grandpa say boats and ho hose, bitches. So that's all you I know, gotta say. <laughs> there was still stuff I missed in that. I told you a lot happened in that that session, and I even then I glossed over bits of it. Like how good Dewey is at turning. She's still focus. going over. She's still going on and on. Wow. It's not even your turn anymore, Carol. No, go ahead, Kyle. I want to get to the actual topic. This is an interesting one. An interesting one. Topic. It is. Topic. What was the topic? Oh, my God. It was supposed to be minor magic items. No, but we got to do agrarian continued. communities in d, d Oh, okay. So. Minor magical items. They are awesome. What a dick. No? Okay. <laughs> so, continuing on uh, 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 from last uh, Tuesday's Between the Roll episode, uh, if, I, I, if I, I, I stutter anymore, it'll be like Dewey is actually here. But, but, but early, early campaign Dewey, not, not later campaign. Uh, ah. Later campaign do is, oh, 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 he is. <laughs> agreed. And he's good. No, so last week we were talking about the various civilizations and running campaigns in them. And to which point I said, Frank, Frank, no, you moron, this is a huge topic. Why are we trying to talk about it on one 15 minute interval? Because Carol kept explaining the episode scene by scene. Well, you know, instead of saying that, you could just move on and talk about this. I could, but you laughed at uh, Dewey crying, so I had to get you. Crying. <laughs> no, I like. I expected from Frank, crying. but you're a terrible person, Carol. You need to start anyway, having it like so, a lightning round. <laughs> going after several civilizations, uh, uh, we said, yeah, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So tonight we're going to be talking about uh, uh, the tribal early civilization um a uh, campaign that's gonna be run and whether you know that's a prehistoric you know uh your tribe is running there and this group of party is part of that or whether it's uh the modern D, &D sense in which case you know it's the tribes in the uh 10 towns ice peaks region uh, if you're familiar with the forgotten realms version of that i don't know if dragon lance or Greyhawk does anything like that no one really cares because it's old. Greyhawk is awesome. Hey. Oh. Although Forgotten Realms in Icewind Dale is awesome. <laughs> so I love Icewind Dale. I love I love the Forgotten Realms and can't wait for this uh, uh, their latest setting, which is Icewind Dale, to come out, which is out. Oh, can't yeah, wait to pull. What are you talking about? Pay attention, Carol. Damn it. Anyway. It was interesting enough. We wanted to talk a little bit about actually making the campaign there. And so, I don't know. I actually didn't plan anything. I don't have Damn you, Kyle. written out. I wrote it, but then I didn't actually write it. And... Fortunately, I have the email. <laughs> so oh, he has so... the email. All right. Now, uh, yeah. So let's start at the beginning here. Session zero. What yes. does a campaign, and you can choose either prehistoric or the modern D&D &D setting, 
uh, look like to you guys. And Frank, let's skip you and go straight to Carol because she was talking. What? Carol. What, what does is session good? zero? What does uh, uh, session zero? Uh, what does the setting look like essentially for you? Oh God. Well, I mean, if you're doing like prehistory. Yeah, yeah. Choose I, one or the other I, or both. I, the thought of clans uh, living in caves, um, discovering all sorts of, you know, just basically at the discovering everything and inventing everything. You know, we're at the very beginning and there's just so much, there's so many places you can go with that. Um, I, I, you know, I kind of almost want to have one of those characters be some sort of a spontaneous caster that everyone's like, you know, suspicious about. Um, I know magic is supposed to be part of this discussion and there's so, yeah. so much you can say about it, but uh, are we including that in this or do you want to save that for magic? Well, let's talk about character creation first. Let's talk about what things are you allowing your player characters to do? What are you not? What are you nixing? Are you reflavoring any classes uh, to better suit the setting? Um, like for example, wizards, uh, someone who studies magic seems a little bit out there to me, and I personally think I would nix the class entirely if I were doing a prehistoric campaign. I, yeah, I, you know, it's, it's funny because I remember in the thing they mentioned about whether or not you'd have any magic at all except for clerical magic. Um, actually, I don't know if I'd have organized religions either. Um, it, to me, be more shamanistic than clerical. Odin will slay you! <laughs> That's not really prehistory, though. You know, Odin. Odin is is a bit more. Ball, modern. Ball will slay you, non-believer. But even then, it's still that's still you know organized religion is is definitely beyond prehistory. Um, but I, I like the thought of shamanistic magic uh, for that. Yeah, I probably would nix the wizard because you're right. That is a very studied. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and writing and such really needs to be a thing. You can have it, but I mean, think about true prehistory. There isn't a lot, of, there really isn't parchment and, and such like that. There's people would do just cave paintings and such on walls mm -hmm. uh, was a lot of their communication. But like a lot of the other classes, I absolutely like a, a, a sorcerer because it's such an, it's an ingrained magic. I could totally see that. I could see bards, I mean, you know, musical instruments go back that far. Uh, flutes? Yeah, ocarinas, I think, go back. Whoa! Yeah. Mature audiences only. Hey, wait. What? 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 And you, and you, have you ever heard of an ocarina? I actually own an ocarina somewhere around. Oh, my. Yes, I, I played Final Fantasy. I am familiar. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little, it's the precursor to the modern day flute. Um... You know, it's the, so yeah, I think bards are allowed. I think, as I said, I don't know if I'd have organized religion, but I, so I like the thought of nature religion. And you'd have to, you probably have to sort of create a pantheon to go along with that, where you're basically worshiping the war, worshiping uh, nature, you know, thunder and lightning. You're right, I guess Odin, but it's not when we call Odin. They make up your own names. Okay. So I think that's a bit about Odin. <laughs> go ahead you can go on to somebody else thank goes, you right? thank you carol that's very kind of you dave what are you thinking i wasn't thinking, thinking about i wasn't thinking about going that far back you know to pre-historical <laughs> age although i mean there there are tools for settings in that like in eberron deserts of the coast there's the halflings the talenta halflings where i mean you brought up dinosaurs, Kyle. So they're there. <laughs> uh, there's also, if you're looking for settings for something kind of uh, almost prehistorical or tribal or whatever, there is a Tomb of Annihilation. There's some great settings in that too. But I wasn't even thinking that. I was thinking just a low match campaign. We're talking on the cusp of civilization more agrarian type or you know almost feudal type situations where there's really not much magic at all like you said wizards i mean they're they're just they're a myth you know 
uh, I mean, you know, things like magic spells, scrolls and stuff like that, they're extremely rare that they, they wouldn't even be in your realm. You know, I mean, that would take a higher level character to venture out of this world that, you know, you're creating in session zero. Um, would you then nix all the full clusters and just say, yeah, guys, no wizards, sorcerers, warlocks. You can be maybe a ranger or a paladin to cover your mm -hmm. cleric and your, well, your shaman yeah. or your, yeah, I guess both can be shamanistic. In that oh, case. yeah, yeah. So I, mean, knows um, the wilderness well I mean, even a cleric would be seen as, you know, depending on the type of magic that they wield or whatever, you know, yeah. I mean, even that is limited, you know, I mean, nothing like raising dead or anything like that. I mean, something like that could lead to stoning or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah. um you know, uh, but like, for example, I mean, there is like there aren't any real classes developed yet. You can go that far uh, into the development of your world to where, you know, a blacksmith picks up a hammer because there's some kind of like, say, bandit incursion or something like that, you know, and dun, dun, it's dun. pretty much, you know, running the fighter or the the, you know, barbarian or whatever you know i mean i would keep it definitely low magic mostly melee uh, classes or ranger classes and things like that you know your rangers could be like for example uh, just the village hunters and stuff like that or you know if it's a little more civilized they they're the ones that are kind of like the game wardens or something for the area Sure. things like orcs goblins and stuff like that they're, they're myths they exist but you know they're only there as like if you're off the beaten path or something like that you venture too far into forests or you know dwarves they've been locked in their mountains for 500 years and stuff like that i mean you know these are all just like folk tales and things like that almost like fairy tales you know so sure and I'm you gonna know, take depending on Sorry, you brought up a really good point that I wanted to bring okay. up. So I'm going to hold you right there. I'm going to okay. go hit Frank here. Frank, we were kind of talking about classes, but uh, Dave mentioned that uh, uh, races as well. And how would you involve, if you want to do like a little short classes, I think we kind of hit it with those two. Oh, they got them all. They got them all? Yeah, Nick, yeah was, Druid. Was, Druid was, is what you want, not a cleric. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. That, or is it or shaman? I would say the races in session zero, uh, you guys would have to decide on what is going to be the predominant races. I mean, I, you know, you could say humans, but how about prehistoric elves because they have extremely long lives and play them as a, a Vulcan before they found peace and solitude. I was always wondering how that would work with yeah. the elves. <laughs> so, uh, and that's a perfect example. Yeah. But I, I would shrink the character races just like you shrink the character classes uh just i, I mean there's going to be a lot of similarities in there you're going to have a lot of cohesion uh but you know everybody has their own personality so they'll make it work i mean you can have a party of fighters and they can all do just dumbass things completely different sure. so with a clan you end up picking one race among the entire thing Unless there's an odd thing going on, maybe it is humans, and then you mix in a half elf or a half orc or something like that. Or I mean, you I can mean, do Warcraft. <laughs> elves idea because the <laughs> thing with elves. I'm sorry, I want to talk a little bit because elves, you know, they don't reproduce quite as quickly as humans. No. And so you want to add this drama to the clan, and if you make it focused on the clan, when a clan member dies, that's a serious thing because. It's going to be a long time before uh, there comes a baby to replace that. Mm -hmm. You're you're going to be a dying breed quite quickly if you do not take care of the family clan. Did you want um, to say something? Yeah, Wild Mount kind of has an interesting concept that when you die, I mean, a new life isn't created until it transports through this magical object you know mm -hmm. so like you said hey. like a child's birth i mean could be a thousand years or something like that so mm -hmm. so yeah i know what you, yeah that mm -hmm. i know what you're talking about there no i was thinking is that a lot of a lot of you think about a lot of the early 
prehistoric clans and stuff, they were nomads. They would travel around going after the food. So I don't think it's impossible for different races to meet up with each other either. And I don't, I mean, I'm thinking about like, I'm going through all the races in my head and I, I don't think I, I don't think you'd have to pare them down as much as you think. Cause I think you could make, I mean, prehistoric dwarves would be friggin' awesome in my view. Um, and yeah, I mean, I could, I could see it maybe, maybe not gnomes as much, but, but most of them, but even then, I mean, who's to say you can't, it's, it's your world, do what you want with it. That's ultimately what it is. And I think, and just, just try to make it believable. And I think, you know, with enough imagination, you absolutely can. Sure. All right. We've nixed uh, a lot of classes. We're nixing a couple of the races too, but not necessarily. But I mean, with a clan, yeah. you do want to keep it to a small singular race, more or less, and then add enemy clans outside here and there. I imagine with backgrounds, we're probably nixing a few things. There's probably not so many sailors or guild yeah. artisans or courtiers or anything like that. Is You're going to have courtiers. <laughs> just would be hey, I don't know. How big is the clan? 30 people, maybe? So <laughs> what are you adding for the players to really get them to connect? It's like, oh, well, I can't do this. I can't do that. And maybe you'll bend the rules for those people. But what are you adding to this? Are you adding any homebrew rules? I think personally, one of the interesting things I figured was uh, adding a ability score. And the first time I've heard this, it was for dwarves because they have clans and so tribes and clans are very similar in the situation where they have strength, dexterity, <laughs> constitution, charisma, intelligence, wisdom, and finally reputation due to how you deal with the rest of the family. Maybe <coughs> if you have a high score in reputation, your father's father slayed uh, a T-Rex single-handedly, and now the entire tribe looks to your great-grandfather and you with a little bit more respect because, hey, well, he comes from the T-Rex killer. Uh, anything you would add like that or your thoughts on that? And let's start with Carol. Since you kept it short last time, let's see if you can do it again. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm picking on you. but No, no, you always pick on me. How is this different from <laughs> Uh, no, actually, uh, I, you know what? I wouldn't really add any more stats. I, I, I like the way D and D is. And, you know, I think it's better when you have new players and, and such to just, just keep it the way it is in terms of stats. But I like the thought of maybe, maybe taking that info, that backstory, so to speak, uh, you know, and, and when you're writing your game and you're coming up with the other people that they're going to interact with. You keep that in mind for like adding bonuses or penalties <laughs> to um, to basically charisma checks, you know, to interact, you know, uh, like your diploma, uh, what is it? Persuasion, I almost said diplomacy, man. Persuasion and deception and, and those type of- 40 minutes, minutes folks. What? 40 minutes, folks. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Fine. That's, Before that's she mentioned another game. <laughs> Uh, that was by accident, okay? And it, it, I've gone the other way around, too. So <laughs> multiple systems, man, and with close close rule sets with just different names. Um, but uh, they Make fun of her yeah, at her Pathfinder would, games, too, when she says D&D &D 5e. All right, go ahead. Sorry. No, I think that's, that's, that's about it. I said I don't think I'd really – I might add backgrounds. I might be tempted to add backgrounds, but otherwise a lot of it just, it, it would just be the way I'd normally run. I, you know, I keep in mind of, okay, you know, if you're coming across these people, whether or not you're, fr you know, whether or not you're friendly with them or if they can see you enemy or whatever, and then you just base your checks on that. You base the DCs on that. You, you actually have to, you don't need bonuses and that just make a higher DC. Sure. That's what I do instead of an, another stat. All right. Frank, you look like you were pondering something for a moment there. What do you got? Well, I was trying to think of the overall scheme that you might use. And with, I think with a prehistoric, you're going to have to go ahead and limit yourself on weapons yeah. as well. Steel is not there. Uh, you're going to have to go stone axes, clubs, maybe 
maybe bronze. And I was the, the thing that puzzled me the most was what would the goal of a prehistoric scenario be? And I would think that that would be investigation or discovery. I mean, you know, yeah, Grog is the big bad guy, but he's just he's just one guy and the, the tribe next door isn't that big. So I think you would try and maybe gear the party towards, you know, they've got this thing called tin. Yeah. And when you add it to copper, you know, you get bronze. And I think, uh, you know, because in our campaign, you know, oh, great big bad guys, you know, powerful magic and all that shit. When you limit it, it causes you to think. It's like doing an urban adventure. You know, you can't throw a lot of monsters in the urban because that shit doesn't fly. So in a prehistoric campaign, I think you would base it more on discovery and or uh, diplomacy. A uh, hundred years ago, when I was in uh, eighth grade, uh, Miss Gate or not Miss Gates, uh, Miss uh, Powell taught us a game. Uh, she divided the class into eight groups. Uh, each group had its own pluses and minuses, and then you had to figure out how to be last man standing, kind of a survivor style. Right. And I think you could also use that. So I would go with discovery or survival because your resources are limited. There ain't no gold. Nobody gives a shit about that. But for that fox pelt and a shot at some, uh, uh, you'll do just about anything. Does that work? Uh, you need a new economy based, uh, a new economy base actually for a game like that, which is would be very interesting. It'd be, yeah, no, it'd be meant be furs. You'd have to go with furs. I think I think froze by the I way. Froze it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm vamping here. Uh yeah, he froze. Uh, be He'll be back, second. folks. So, but yeah, I mean, all right, I'm gonna mention another game because oh my god, it, it, the pirate. Basically, I'm playing in a pirate game, and we have something called plunder points, and you actually cash that in for gold. But you, I wonder if you could do something like that. A similar system to that, you have points, and you could translate it if you were, if you needed to translate it into gold. But you could come up with, okay, and you actually with the plunder points, you actually find out what the plunder is, and certain plunder will sell better in certain locations. So, like we had silks and stuff that we were we we got off a ship, and we were selling at the main port. They might have actually done better at a different place because. Um, I forget why now, but we sold it for a good, it was a good enough total we got for that. Um, like, oh, we had like, we had like ship goods. That's what it was. We had ship goods that weren't going to sell, aren't going to sell for crap here. But if we go to a much smaller place where they don't get the goods in there as much, then we'll get a lot more for it. it actually yeah, but your, your resource economy is going to be so much lower in a prehistoric campaign. That's not even going to yeah. fly. It's food and feathers. But it's still, well, yeah, I mean, but still, or, or pelts, or mm -hmm. it's still, it's still, no, you could still do this, a similar thing. It would be scaled back. Yeah, you wouldn't have as much, but it still would be the same basic idea. And that would be a very interesting to, thing to explore rather than just gold, you know, you're not going to have a gold economy. You're going to have to think of something else. And that's not a bad thing to look at to do in a game like for a prehistoric game. So, David, what do you think? Um, well, there's a lot to think about. <laughs> uh, I mean, I a step just really quick, go over what they were talking and talking about real quick so I can catch up. Uh, Carol <laughs> talked about her pirate game. Yeah, she mentioned another <laughs> game again. Yep. Pirate I game. Uh, basically, in that you trade, you do this trading of goods. You mm -hmm. actually find out what you get for plunder, and you have to figure out how to best spend you know sell that off to, uh, you know you have to pick your right ports and things like that and you actually know what it is like it could be a thing of wood or sugar or whatever and so and maybe a plunder not plunder but you know maybe some sort of a point system and along those lines of of that the way that that game is done sure it's 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 an interesting very interesting way it works and it works well. I mean, I'm probably not explaining it terrifically well. It's I found it was better to actually play it and figure, you know, see how it go works, you mm -hmm. know, for realsies. But I could, I, it'd be very interesting because said you can't do gold in prehistory. It's all oh, pelt. 
absolutely see how you would use that for prehistory or a, a, a more modern D and D setting where you're in a uh, a tribe as well, um, because they might not necessarily want to trade in gold either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, for weapons in that modern setting, you would maybe still have some more modern weapons than you would. But yeah, uh, I, I thought that too, Frank, with the weapons. I was like, you need like bone, you can need like bone spears and you can do bows and arrows and no crossbows. No, okay. no, no fancy, no, no steel. That means your armor changes too, by the way. Well, see, you know, that's where your uh, weapons start to change too. Your plus one, plus two, plus three weapons might be an obsidian axe or yeah. obsidian arrowheads. Not necessarily oh. magical, but a little bit nicer. Um, but going on from the economics of the game, let's let's not bore our players in session zero wise. Let's talk about what is this campaign arc going to be? What are the kind of tropes that we might run into, might, we might use uh, uh, to run this campaign? Um, examples maybe being, you know, there is a stronger, more advanced force moving in that can apply to prehistoric and, and more modern D&D. &D. Uh, maybe it's a Truman show and you've actually been in a glass bubble the entire time <laughs> On a wizard out to find thing. out that the elves and the dwarves have worked together to use humans as prehistoric entertainment. It's bloodthirsty there, man. Um, wow. Or maybe it's un unifying the tribes and all the land. What kind of campaign arcs are you guys going to run? Dave, it's been a while since we've heard from you. What yeah. are you doing? No, I think it was hilarious you brought up Truman Show because our last show, I was thinking about that when we were talking about settings. I was just like, hey, Truman Show. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Um, as far as like a campaign arc, uh, arc, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, orc, uh, discovery or something like that, or <laughs> perhaps uh, the discovery of magic, you know, could be, you know, uh, an arc for the campaign you know because magic is so rare you know even magic items are rare like your plus one plus one of whatever doesn't exist yet you know um also god what was the, the other thing that i was thinking about with this um i had put some thought into it one of the things that um, we discussed economy we moved on to uh our um campaign arcs Mm -hmm. um one of the other thing like i said discovery is one thing dealing with hostile forces uh things that like suddenly aberration not aberrations but monstrosities or aberrations mm -hmm. start to appear you know uh you you're encountering creatures that you haven't even seen before you know and dealing with that could be another arc for the campaign you know yeah, so the so, homeland gets invaded by an alien outside force. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good. Or you see a dragon for the first time. Oh, you know? oh, well, great. oh, you're hitting my heartstrings there, man. I love firsts of anything. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. Mother of all dragons. It's like, oh, that's. that's <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, so that's, that's my input. Put. Uh, for that so discovery of magic and then perhaps uh new creatures or aberrations so okay carol what's your uh, general campaign arc from levels you, one to ten or maybe one to twenty what are you what's the whole campaign about i like the thought of um a mythical beast that someone yeah and you said you friggin said dragon i mean i wasn't really thinking dragon it could be it could be something of your own creation too, mm -hmm. but somebody at some point saw some mythical, some mythical beast and, and it's going to be the adventures of this, this tribe as they go after it. And they, you know, it, it's always like one step ahead until finally at the end of the campaign, they do eventually catch up, but there's a lot of random things and stuff. They're basically going around the land chasing after this thing mm -hmm. and you can have all sorts of things happen. Um, I thought about like what Frank said too, actually in some ways going pushing it to the next age so like you know discovering that um Ten discovering months. how to make 
yeah, how to make bronze or hell, if you want, you can even go a little further and how to make steel. I keep going to talk about low magic and, and more modern, mm -hmm. but something along those lines. But third one I have in mind too. Yeah, that's, that's good enough for me. The best for last, the guy who writes the most one yeah. shot in all the campaigns. Frank, you are running a stone and sorcery campaign. What's the general arc? Are you ready for it? Oh, Lord. Here we go. Woo! I'm 180. Going to do the 180. Planet of the Apes. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. No. Okay. You discover the Forbidden City. You've got subways. You have real shit that works like a gun or a cursed baby doll. And oh, it's all food. <laughs> yeah, it's and always magic. a cursed baby doll. It's always a cursed baby doll. So you reverse it. Uh, the land is prehistoric because you did it. <laughs> <laughs> you damn dirty apes did it. Uh, and you know what? Your clans turn into the humanoid of your choice. Uh, Bugbears would be a good choice because uh, they're mutated <laughs> or orcs because they are mutated. Um, so yeah, you just spin it on its heel. And the first time they find strange scrawlings and you write it out on a piece of paper and it says, uh, Kalima. the New York Times. That's right. It says <laughs> Subway. And then your players are like, Fuck. <laughs> that's right, boys and girls. You're in the ugly future. That's how I do the pre you, you have done the past, though, because we did the cacophony episode where we went back to, like, you know, I don't, it, was, it was prehistory, I think. Yep, mm -hmm. it was prehistory. That was yep. that. That just popped to mind with this whole thing. I'm like, I remember playing in that, and that was that. And that was we get were, in and get out. This yeah, is we, what the this, hell just happened. It would, although admittedly, it would be very interesting to drop a group of PCs with no way back, and you're stuck in that time period. Well, and if you if you're not Doctor Zayas, and you're just a regular chimp that doesn't know what the hell's going on, and all of a sudden you're following the orangutan and it's like, holy shit, what is this? There's a whole new world out here. There's <laughs> wire and a, 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 a horse and all this stuff. And that's, you go from there because now literally they can pick up a, a metal shard and now they do have a long sword. There you go. That would be my thought. An interesting idea. That, that was going to actually be one of my questions. Thank you, Frank, for bringing it up, you know? whether you explore and create or whether you explore and rediscover. Um, so let's talk real quick because we're going to end this fairly soon. I was going to start with Carol, but we'll end with Carol. That way I can blame her for when it goes over. Oh, it's hit. Two Not questions it. to finish it off. <clears throat> One, uh, does your party rely on the clan or does the clan rely on the party? And then what are the one of the adventures that your party is going to go on? Uh, that That's actually both of the questions. Oh, Does Lord. the clan rely on the party, the party on the clan? And what is one adventure? David, we will start with Frank, because he's a fast thinker. Frank, what do you <laughs> Uh, the clan is starting to die off from some pox disease. The clan will rely on the youngest members of the clan the party to go out and somehow find an evil witch who knows how to whoop 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 make the cure and if they fail everybody dies tpc total oh no tc total clan npc k total npc car that's right <laughs> that that is my this is a campaign man that's going to be the total npc kill jeez sure. all right david down on to you you know uh, who is the plan who relies on who in this situation this campaign uh, and a small part of the adventure what is it the clan relies on the the party or the adventurer uh, i'm thinking Again, in the setting of seeing a magical creature dragon for the first time, but you know, every most of the people in the clan are old, older, and you're the youngest, you're the adventurer, so you know, and uh, that would that would. 
probably set it up for that, you know? Dragon appears for the first time, and then maybe later on, some a wizard appears out of nowhere. A young person that, you know, so it's Just like in the a first trench coat with wild actual. white hair. Marty! Yeah, <laughs> Marty! <laughs> exactly. I don't know, Doc. <laughs> so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so that that would be my foray into it. The clan is dependent on the party. So okay, and finally, Carol. Gosh, it's all God, Carol. You already made us wait. Damn it, Carol. All right, answer those two questions as your final thought. So it's his fault. Um, It's my fault. No, let's see. All right, so. My adventure would be, I, I really like the discovery aspect and I like the thought of um, the, the, clan, the clan or the tribe sees others with more advanced weapons and they know this could be a very bad thing unless, and they find themselves, they really want to steal the secret of that, how they get those weapons, where they made them from or whatever. And that's so basic. I'm not necessarily even going to go with, they're just the youngest. They're the ones who are the fighters and the and the 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 the, the, the warriors of the of the tri- of the tribe. Um, they don't necessarily have to all be the youngest people. They're just the 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 best uh, the the best people for the job. So maybe the sneakiest, or maybe the you know toughest, most clever. You throw you know then basically you can have your your one of each you know type. You know, a bring a heat. You want to have somebody who can heal them on the spot. So, uh, yeah, I think that's what I do. As for that, oh, as for the other thing, I think in this case, obviously, the the clan would depend on the party. Although I like to sort of think it's sort of a back and forth. Oh, because, sure. because what? Because the thing of it is, you the the great thing about having a clan or a tribe around them, it's a great way to give your PCs information. You know, there it's that's your info dump, um, and that's a great way to get it. So I think in that regards, the the party depends on the the clan for the information that they need to go out and do it. But they're the ones who actually physically got into it. So the clan depends on them to go out and succeed and find the secret. Okay, I got to say it. Uh, <laughs> the party depends on the clan because they're going to use them as cannon fodder to there survive until the end. That's it. <laughs> that is so murder really? horrible. <laughs> the clan is going to help. Uh, you're, 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 you're fading gonna, out, Kyle. You're choking again. Oh, no. Oh. And he's gone. He's gone, folks. Uh, yeah, what? Final thoughts, David. Uh, yeah, no, I enjoyed this conversation. Uh, putting together a campaign based uh, solely on uh, just primitive, low match stuff. I mean, yeah, I'm excited about it. So I'd love to try it someday. There he comes. And he's back. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, Kyle, why does your internet suck so badly? <laughs> Oh my god, that's he's crazy. running porn in the background. That's exactly running it. so much porn in the background. There's so much bandwidth. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, yeah. Actually, HD, it's my HD wife. videos. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Ooh. you said my final thought is this is a really interesting <laughs> alternate for you know, it's definitely a different setting uh that you could possibly run. And I think it's a very interesting one. There's a lot you can do with it. As we'll just look at the ideas everyone came up with, and I think there's a lot more ideas out there too. So let's try it, man. But I'm we'll not- save that for after the show, Carol. We have to end it now. Hey, uh, we got your final thought. Frank's final thought was cannon fodder, is what I heard. Mm-hmm. David, your final thought, real quick. Oh, my f- low magic, you know, setting. Try it. Low magic, <laughs> way to go. All right. Yeah. All right. And with that, then we will say good night to everybody. Remember, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, all the YouTube stuff. Contact us if you want a seat at this table or at one of the games. Muter, muter.